Welcome back or welcome to my channel. I'm Chloe. I make videos here on YouTube primarily about the third generation Toyota Tacoma, which of course I've got behind me. But as you can also see, I have a Rivian R1T out as well. I'm with my friend Nate, who's the owner of this Rivian, and today we're going to do some off-roading. We're gonna do some camping, overlanding as you might call it. You can be the judge of that. And we're basically just gonna compare what a day of adventuring looks like in a Toyota Tacoma versus a Rivian R1T. So obviously, I have to mention that this video is not going to be an apples to apples comparison for many reasons. For one, hopefully you know that the R1T is an all electric truck, so it's got no engine under the hood or a transmission. At least, a transmission in the sense that I'm used to. These trucks are at way different price points, they're not the same size. I wouldn't even consider them in the same class if that makes sense. I could just go on and on about how this video isn't perfect, but at the end of the day, we're looking at two trucks that are really marketed towards people who like to explore and go off-roading, and that's what the spirit of this video is really going to be about. I'm no expert, but I just really like trucks, and I want to see how different of an experience I will have in both of these trucks. So I'm really excited to get in this truck and do a little bit of off-roading, but Nate, can you give us like a quick walk around and a quick tour of the truck so we can get a couple of different specs? So this right here is the uh, Rivian R1T. Now, the power figures for this truck, it's got 835 horsepower, powered by four independent motors, Now let's take a look under the hood, except there's no engine down here. Oh yeah. It is a trunk. <laughs> I like to call this the frunk. Do you call it the frunk or? Oh, it gets very funky. Yeah. <laughs> this truck is equipped with um, air suspension, which can lower the truck down to about 9.7 inches or raise it up to 15.5 inches. That's a huge range of difference. And what's the zero to 60 on that? Zero to 60 on this truck is about 3.3 seconds. Wow. But that's with the suspension all the way lowered, correct? Roughly. Yeah. <laughs> so we are on the 21-inch um, rims. We're using the all-season um, road tires, the uh, Pirelli Scorpions. Now, it's actually a custom tire that um, Drivian and uh, Pirelli had developed. But we're out here today to prove that uh, on-road is only nearly a suggestion. Yes. <laughs> So the R1T has a bunch of storage options, but one of its most unique storage option features is the gear tunnel. Whoa, how'd you open that? Was that like by pressing that button up here? Yep, there is a little button over here which uh, undoes the latch and lets this drop down. So it can support weight. And it can also double as a seat, which is really, really nice when you're camping and stuff because a lack of that really, really sucks. Air compressor kit. Does that come stock with your truck? Yes, every uh, Rivian will come with a built-in air compressor. Very cool. And a built-in air compressor kit. Cool. I think the front of this truck looks really, really cool. And I think it's particularly interesting that Rivian kind of didn't have any stylistic cues to go off of because this is their first truck. They weren't like Ford in the sense that they didn't go and make a super conventional looking electric truck and they didn't go on the other end of the spectrum and make something pretty wacky looking like the Tesla Cybertruck. And I think part of that has to do with these really interesting looking and shaped headlights and this full light bar in the front as well as the full light bar in the back. It should be interesting to note that this um, light bar will actually change color. So if you're charging, it'll pulse green. Jeeps have the wave, Subies have the wave. It'd be really cool if um, when two Rivians see each other, we can flash this in green. <laughs> I'm sure they can make the software to do that. How do you charge your truck? Well, you charge it um, over here. So there's a little panel here on the front door, Whoa. Uh, in the front side. Uh, you have two ports. We have a J1772 uh, plug, which maxes out at about 11.5 kilowatts of AC charging. Now, if you're doing road trips and you need to charge fast, 
there is a little tab here um, which allows you to do DC charging. And the DC charge rate peaks at 216, 217 kilowatts. So that essentially means that you can get from about 10% to 80% in, I wanna say like half an hour-ish or so. That's not too bad at all. Now, of course, this Rivian is a little bit modified and we'll get into the camping setup in a little bit. As you can see, there's a rooftop tent, but I wanna talk about some of the bed specs. So what size is your bed? So the bed is four and a half feet, which, you know, if for most truck people, it's uh, not really that adequate, um, but for an adventure vehicle, totally fine. So this is a pretty unique color. What color is this exactly? So Rivian calls this the uh, forest green color. And I chose this color specifically because it looks great when it gets dirty. It's very similar to the army green in the Toyota Tacoma lineup or just the Toyota lineup in general. Except if you look really closely, the paint has this metallic sheen under it. So it's a very, very beautiful looking truck. And you just got it ceramic coated, so it's looking extra good today. Oh yes, definitely. Okay, so of course, accompanying me today, I've got a Tacoma, specifically the top of the line Tacoma trim, the TRD Pro. Now this isn't one of the newer Tacomas, it's a 2020 and Toyota's made a lot of upgrades to the TRD Pro suspension, for example, and some stylistic changes to the bedside since then. But overall, this is still a pretty new and of course, pretty capable truck. And if you've watched my channel before, you already know how much I love the Toyota Tacoma. So let me give you a quick walk around of some of the specs so you can compare them to the Rivian. So this Tacoma is a little bit modified from its factory form. For one, we've got some Baja Designs Squadron Sports in the color amber, which makes it really great to see and cut through dust when we're off-roading. It's got the Toyota Heritage styled grille with a front camera as well as a front sensor. It's got the blacked out fender flares, which are really just unpainted fender flares. And the reason Toyota did this is because when you're out on the trails, you might get some tree branch scratches. So now you won't have fender flares that look all scratched up. Like I said, this Tacoma is slightly modified from its factory form, so it does have slightly larger tires. These are size 285 70R17 BF Goodrich KO2s. They're all terrain, great for trails like this, as well as on road. We've got Method 703s in the color titanium gloss. This is personally my favorite color of Method wheels. I think they look so good. And another thing I like about Method wheels is they've got B grip technology, so you can air down pretty low with these guys and not worry about losing bead. Of course, with the TRD Pro, you get upgraded suspension. So this truck is equipped with Fox shocks tuned by TRD specifically. And one of the modifications I did to this truck was I gave it a level lift, which was basically lifting it about an inch to clear room for these larger tires and give it a slightly better approach angle for trails. Now, of course, unlike an electric truck, this Tacoma doesn't have a frunk. It's got a 3.5 liter V6 engine that's outputting 278 horsepower and going along with some more of the modifications I've done to it, it's got the TRD cold air intake as well. For this mid-sized truck, Toyota only offers the TRD Pros currently with the five foot bed configuration. So also not a lot of bed space, but slightly more than the Rivian. Of course, we've got four wheel drive and we've also got an electronically locking rear differential. This truck does have an added on tonneau cover that didn't come from the factory. It's specifically the backflip MX-4 and I have a video review on it and I'll have that link down below if you wanna check it out but it's a pretty nice low profile trifold tonneau cover that you'll see more of in this video. So what does off-roading in the Tacoma versus Rivian feel like? Well, we didn't do too much rock crawling due to the nature of our builds and the difficulty of the trail, but we did do a few sections and I got a good idea of what both of these trucks were like off the pavement. All right, we're starting off this trail with a little bit of a hill, so it should be fun. And to make my life easier, I'm going to put my truck into four low. I'm gonna go in neutral, push, four low. Back into drive.
This section wasn't too difficult to start out with, but the combination of the wide tires plus the ease of driving with Toyota's 4 low mode made this nothing for the Tacoma. Before Nate took his truck up the same section, he showed me the different off-road modes he could put the Rivian in. So, you know, you can adjust your ride height here. Yep. You got, um, you can go soft sand mode, which is fine, rock crawl mode. Both trucks are equipped with quite a few cameras. The Rivian has 11 and the Tacoma has 4, so it was interesting seeing what the different default camera views were while we were off-roading in both trucks. I personally like the Rivian better for this. Not only is the screen bigger, but the main thing I like to have is a front camera view to see what the hood is blocking. The Tacoma screen has more information like pitch and roll, but the layout of the screen with too many grid lines leaves much to be desired in my opinion. One thing about the Tacoma and Rivian is that when you're doing off-roading like this, it's really helpful to have a front camera view and have trail navigation at the same time. And due to the limited screen real estate, especially in the Tacoma, it's impossible to see everything at once, which is why I use this Garmin Tread Overland Edition for all my trips off the grid. I wanted to show this to you guys because you really can't find these useful features like off-road trail GPS navigation that has routing for the size and weight of your vehicle and built-in emergency SOS in these trucks normally. So this is what I was using on our adventure. I'll have a more in-depth trail setup video soon that'll go over all the features of this unit, but just know it's awesome for trips like this. I helped spot for Nate as he took his truck down the same hill. You're good. You're, you're, you're clear. Yep. Take it nice and easy down. The Rivian's road tires made for poor traction on the rocks and they were just skidding compared to the Tacoma. Because of the larger and wider tires, the Tacoma had an easier time going up that hill section, but obviously you saw that the Rivian was fully capable of it as well. It should be noted that we would have gotten a much better tire contact patch had we aired down, but we were not aired down. He was three-wheeling a little bit. <laughs> I found this Toyota hitch cover on that section over there, so someone probably lost it. I will say, going up and down from when I sat in it, mm -hmm. feels pretty smooth. Yeah, so that was, the first time we did it was with rock crawl. Yeah. The second time I just did all terrain, I felt so much slip going yeah. climbing up that. I was like, no, I, I need the, the rock yeah. crawl mode. So that was the extra lift plus what else? Uh, so with rock crawl, I believe what happens is that they change the uh, the throttle mapping for Got the pedal. It. So it's a lot more um, minute as far as like you know manipulating the pedal. Yeah, absolutely. In my opinion, the R1T showed more of its capability when we put it in rally mode and essentially sent it. Is my head gonna? <laughs> I don't know, honestly, with this mode. I mean, it does bring a lot of torque at the beginning, but it seems to like to keep it around 30 miles an hour. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh 
While the Tacoma didn't do as much rallying as the Rivian did, we did a few more small sections in it so that Nate could get a feel for what driving it was like compared to his all-electric truck. The next day at camp, I asked Nate about his off-road experience to get his perspective. So we did a lot of off-roading yesterday. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. I got to sit in your truck and you also got to drive the TRD Pro. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience with that? I mean, you've, you've taken your Rivian out a couple of times, so you know what it's like off-roading a truck. What did you feel about the Tacoma? Uh, the Tacoma felt really solid. Um, it handled really well, especially um, on the more difficult sections that we were going. Um, I didn't really feel like I was like um, out of control or had too much slippage in the wheels. Like I had a clear idea of how the truck felt. Um, yeah, it was a really solid experience. Yeah. Um, While we were on this trip, we did fewer sections in the Rivian than we did with the Tacoma just because of Nate's wheel and tire setup. I mean, I've said this before in my videos a lot, wheels and tires make such a big difference when you're going off-road. I'll be honest, I was hesitant on a few sections on our off-road trip here just because of my tire setup. Like I have the all-road tire setup and I mean, that's perfect on road. It can do some light off-roading, but when it comes to rock crawling or um, really intense uh, gravel and sand situations that we came up across. Um, I did attempt it a few times and there was just a lot of slippage. Like I felt there was, I, I couldn't grip the, the, the rock surfaces the way I'd like. And that just kind of compromised my confidence in the handling of it. That's not really a criti criticism for the truck itself. That was just more for my exact wheel setup. Yeah. So I think in the future, I will be getting the um, all-terrain tires and kind of swap them out just depending on like um, what the situation is. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to make another video in the future comparing this off-road trip with a next one where you have, you know, new all-terrain tires because that does make a huge difference. Both of our camping setups were quite different. Nate's truck is set up for a more permanent camping solution, whereas my TRD Pro isn't. So we're setting up camp now, and Nate, this setup took you like two seconds to do. So give me a quick walk around. I'm really curious to see, obviously you've got the rooftop tent mm -hmm. on your, um, these bed bars, which are stock, cause they got the Rivian logo on them, right? Yeah, so the, the cool thing about these, um, these roof rails is that they are, um, yeah, they're from Rivian. And then what kind of rooftop tent is this? So this rooftop tent is the Tepui Ayer. Um, it's originally meant for more compact cars like the Subaru Crosstrek. Um, I had this since um, I've started um, like doing some camping with my uh, Impreza. So just for reference, I'm about an um, average size American, like 5'10-ish. And this is pretty spacious um, in here. This uh, tent fits about two people. Um, it's got great ventilation, like pretty open windows. Um, it's got a rain guard on the top which uh, is actually removable. So uh, what I like to do sometimes is I like to take it off and just uh, wash the stars while camping out in the desert. But yeah, the Tapui is a pretty awesome rooftop tent if I do say so. And it's got this foam pad, which you just use as a mattress, right? Because it's just soft enough? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, just soft enough. I mean, I'm not too picky. I could literally sleep on a rock. <laughs> but this is like, yeah, it's pretty sturdy enough and it's still bendable to where um, it'll fold just nicely. One of the reasons we chose this campsite is because it's got a uh, partial hookup. I can open this for you, make myself useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we only have really level two charging because I believe this breaker box only goes up to 50 amps. So 50 amps should get about seven kilowatts at the best. Oh. There we go. We should be fully charged to 85% in seven hours. And we are currently pulling seven kilowatts, which is not bad at all.
It got kind of dark last night, so you guys are seeing this the next morning, basically a walk around of my camping setup compared to Nate's Rivian. So as you can see, it's a lot different. I kind of have this truck bed tent setup. It's a pretty affordable option for someone like me who just doesn't go camping super, super often. I've only used this a handful of times, but basically it's the right line tent. It fits right over the Tacoma bed. They have different versions depending on your bed size. I have an air mattress set up. I brought a sleeping bag, blanket, and pillows as well. And then I've also got the tailgater tire table. I've had this for a while. I left it in my garage. I totally forgot about it. And then for this trip, I, for some reason, remembered that I had it and decided to bring it. And it is awesome. It's basically a table that just mounts to your tires. So you just have extra space. And that definitely came in clutch last night when we were making dinner. Here's a little tour of my sleeping situation slash tent situation. Like I said, I have an air mattress. I honestly don't remember where this is from. I probably have shown it in my other camping videos here on my channel, but it's really nice because it fits in the bed of a truck, even with the wheel wells and everything. So this was like nice and it pretty much stretches out to the full width too. So I feel like I have almost like a queen or full size bed back here, which is nice. As you guys can probably see, the tent doesn't fit on this truck perfectly. It's supposed to fit a lot better. And that's because this TRD Pro that I brought has a tonneau cover. And because of the way the tonneau cover folds up, the tent can't fully mount on the truck like it's supposed to. So it looks a little more wonky than it normally is, but I will say the tonneau cover actually really, really was nice last night. I was offloading a lot of footage last night that Nate and I took, and I just put my laptop on there and I worked and it was very, very comfortable. It was like working in bed with a little table on top. So here in the tent, two windows up top. There are also another two windows on the side that you can open up over there. There's also like little pockets for your phone, but again, didn't use those because I just put my phone up there. And then unrelated, but just some other stuff I have mounted on this bed is I've got the Pro Eagle Jack handle mounted on here pretty securely with these clamps. I actually have a mounting system for the Pro Eagle Jack that normally goes back here, but just to maximize space for sleeping, I decided not to bring the mount. These beautiful blue billet tie downs that happen to match my sleeping bag, as well as back there, I've got more billet tie downs so these are the ones for the rails, and these are the ones that replace the OEM bed ones. Good morning, you guys. As you can probably tell from my outfit choice, it is cold. It got pretty cold last night, like I think in the high 30s and I wasn't prepared for that. So I was a little cold over the night, but other than that, the sleeping situation was pretty comfortable. Right now I'm enjoying a cup of Wildling coffee. These are their single serve coffees that are basically come in like a tea bag. And so you can see I'm kind of like steeping my coffee in, in this cup right here. So you just add hot water and it comes out really, really great. I'm a big coffee person, so I really care about how my coffee tastes and this stuff's good, you guys. And as you can see, we got a nice, delicious hot cup of coffee. Medium roast because the later the roast is, the more caffeine there is. And Lord knows I love caffeine. I enjoy my wildling coffee, cooked up some breakfast, then sat down with Nate to ask questions I've been curious about when it comes to owning an electric truck. Not many people have his perspective, so it was interesting hearing what he had to say. 
The Toyota Tacoma ranges in price and obviously the TRD Pro is the top of the line. So MSRP for a TRD Pro is somewhere along the lines of $47,000. Now the TRD Pro I have today is kind of in a weird situation because it was a salvage build. So a price breakdown of that truck probably doesn't make sense if we're doing a comparison video. What was the MSRP on your Rivian and what package do you have on it and how, how much was that? If you were to get a truck like mine as configured, uh, the MSRP would probably be around 85 to 87 uh, thousand as of uh, October 2022. Yeah. Uh, that's not the price I paid for mine because I had pre-ordered mine years ago. There was like a big pricing fiasco. Thankfully, honored uh, pre-order pricing. So I picked up my truck for 75. And how long did it take for you from your pre-order to actually get your truck delivered to your house? I put in my pre-order in uh, November of 2020 and I took delivery of my truck in May of 2022. If you've watched my channel before, you probably know it's pretty much like based around modifying the third generation Toyota Tacoma. That's what most of my videos are about. The Toyota Tacoma, I would have to say, is probably the most moddable mid-sized truck. Now, I'm not assuming that's the same for the Rivian because A, it's a new truck and it's a whole new brand. And it's not a truck that a lot of people have right now. I mean, you have like been number 3000. So have you thought about any modifications and what's the modding community like for the Rivian? So the modding community for the Rivian is very much in its infancy. Um, because of how integrated all the systems are for the truck, the, the suspension system is core to how the truck works. So I imagine that um, it's gonna be very difficult to, for an aftermarket solution. Uh, there's a lot of like do it yourself, um, you know, wood or metal, um, mods that people have done but yeah we'll give it a year and we'll see uh, where that goes. What I really like about the Rivian and a lot of new electric vehicles is that software updates constantly get pushed to them. It would be really cool if Toyota did something like that for their truck lineup as well. So with your typical internal combustion engine, obviously you're getting oil changes every 5,000 miles or so. What's the maintenance look like for a Rivian owner? Because you really don't have an engine to work with, um, there's really no oil changes that need to be done yeah. <laughs> or any fluids that need to be exchanged. Uh, the only thing that might get annoying is to top off the washer fluid because that is... <laughs> well, that's it, something it will, we all have to do. <laughs> it, yeah, it'll actually warn you like, hey, you gotta fill up your washer fluid. Uh, as far as service goes, they're starting to be built out uh, across the country, but there are service centers that you can bring your truck to and then if you have any like minor issues, they'll they can help uh, diagnose and repair it for you. They have modified trucks like the R1T that have all the tooling to you know fix or repair any kind of um, issues with the truck. And they also have their bigger ones that are kind of based off the uh, EDV, which is like their delivery truck that has a bunch more um, equipment yeah. to, you know, to fix things. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those Amazon ones in Poway because there's an Amazon shipping center there and they look pretty cool. What are some flaws now that you've had the Rivian for a couple months, you've done a lot of on-road and off-road trips and lots of camping trips, of course, that you've found with your R1T? Okay, so um, there's a few things that um, I really, like kind of like just bother me a little bit. One, for one, it's like there is no glove box. Yeah, that was something Why? interesting that I noticed on the passenger side when I got in. I was yeah. looking for a hidden handle because I was seeing that you were opening things with hidden handles and I just never found it. Right. But it turns out there just is no glove box. Right, yeah, there is no glove box and there is no, um, like at, the, at least at the time of um, this filming, there is no running board. So um, it is a little bit difficult for um, shorter people to hop in from time to time. Um, thankfully, from the latest update, there is a kneel mode, which will lower the air suspension upon park, so it's a little bit easier, but some running boards would be nice. <laughs> there are some other like general annoyances, like there is a um, phone as key feature, so you literally do not even need to bring your key fob, like you just have your phone. But I've had issues to where it takes too long to unlock, or it doesn't recognize that my phone is a key, so it'll prompt me to present a key to start driving. This is just minor annoyances like that that uh, could be fixed with software. One annoying thing is, um, like right before this trip, uh, with the latest update, the it did kind of brick my air compressor. <laughs> so my air, my built-in air compressor was not really usable, um, but we did get Halloween mode, so yes. I, I'll take that trade off. <laughs> 
So overall, the Rivian is a very interesting truck, and I have a greater appreciation for it after this trip. There's no doubt it's capable and has both on and off-road proficiency, and it's leaps and bounds more modern than my Tacoma for sure. But after seeing how you have to plan off-roading and camping and road trips around charging for the most part, the somewhat limited options for modifications, at least compared to the Tacoma space, and probably the biggest factor for me, that it's an 80 plus thousand dollar vehicle, the Toyota Tacoma is a more suitable and practical truck for my needs right now. I'm not gonna lie though, the cool factor and the newness of the Rivian makes it tempting for me. But then again, if you've ever watched my channel before, you already know I'm pretty biased towards the Toyota Tacoma. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks to Nate for an awesome trip. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye guys!